Hello, and welcome to the Current Science and Technology podcast from the Museum of Science in Boston. I'm your host, Sean Fankhauser. Every week, we bring you interviews with guest researchers and our museum staff covering science and technology in depth. We're in the middle of football season. Hockey season is really ramping up at this time. And something associated with these sports that has been getting more and more press lately are concussions. Here to talk with me about a technology uh, that might be used in combating perhaps these injuries is the museum's nanotechnology specialist, Corrine Tate. Hi, Corrine. Hi, Sean. So what is this technology? How could it be used in the fight against these very debilitating brain injuries? Well, this is a a pretty interesting technology that comes out of Brigham Young University. There's a grad student named Jake Merrill there who was working on a smart foam. This nano foam is a silicone-based foam, but it's embedded with nanoparticles. And these nanoparticles make the foam piezoelectric. That means that when the foam is compressed, the nanoparticles generate a voltage, and that electric signal can be wirelessly transmitted. So Jake had the idea to take this smart foam, this foam that when it's compressed generates this electric voltage, and use it to measure impacts to the head in athletes that wear helmets. So I've heard about studies before where they use little tiny accelerometers in helmets to try and figure out the forces that players are being exposed to. So how is this technology different from those technologies? It's really different in what forces it's measuring. So you're right. As we're trying to figure out exactly what kind of hits lead to concussion and trying to understand the forces that cause brain injuries, the technologies that we've seen so far have been sensors that are attached to the helmet. And these sensors called accelerometers that you mentioned, what they do is they're able to measure the forces that the helmet is experiencing when an athlete takes a hit. So one issue, though, with those types of sensors is it's really measuring what the helmet is experiencing, not what the head itself is is experiencing. And what's really unique about having the foam itself be the sensor is that when the foam is on the inside of the helmet and the athlete experiences an impact to the head, that foam is compressed by basically the, the skull. The head is compressing the foam. So the foam is really able to measure the impact that the head itself is experiencing rather than just how the helmet is moving around. Okay, so it's only being activated, so to speak, when a hit occurs, not when, say, the player is shaking their head or something like that. In the case of an accelerometer, that would probably register. You're right. The signal is only generated when that foam is compressed. So the electric signal is associated with the magnitude of the impact. So, Corrine, I'm wondering why these technologies are needed to help assess these impacts that players are experiencing. I thought that with concussions, there are outward signs, symptoms that someone has had one of these brain injuries. So why and how is this technology helping uh, with maybe even diagnosing concussions? Well, it's only been in the last few years that we've really understood that concussion and brain injuries are, are really an issue. We're much more aware of these injuries happening now, and we're, we're trying to find better ways of monitoring them. And because it is an invisible injury, a trainer or a coach really does need to look for those symptoms, or until recently, that was the only clue. And the symptoms they'd be looking for, are, or they'd be asking the player if they're experiencing things like headache or dizziness, vision problems, slurring words, or nausea. Uh, those are some of the symptoms that they'd look for. But another issue associated with just relying on the symptoms is the culture of football and the culture of these sports where the athletes are really encouraged to kind of tough it out and, uh, you know, get back in the game as soon as they can rather than really taking any symptoms they experience seriously and even reporting them to the coaches. So coaches and trainers are really looking for other ways to be able to monitor their athletes rather than just looking for these symptoms and expecting the athletes to report what they're experiencing. So that's kind of what's led to these technologies. And it's it actually is a surprisingly big problem. The CDC was reporting that 1.6 million sports-related concussions happen each year, and that that number could be low. It could be as many as you know three and a half million or more. So 
we're recently becoming very aware of what a significant problem this is, and we're trying to find new ways to monitor them. Yeah, it sounds like it's a very serious problem based on some of those numbers that you were mentioning. And I wonder if this technology is going to be used maybe in studies to try and figure out what that threshold, how hard a hit has to be for a concussion to occur. Is that one of the goals of this particular technology and maybe research that might be associated with it in the future? It certainly is an important way that a technology like this could be used because right now it's not very well understood exactly what force needs to be experienced for a concussion to appear or even uh, when you're talking about repeated hits or getting back into the game too soon and having multiple impacts. So really we are in the in the phase where we still need to understand the magnitude of the forces that lead to this. So this this technology could be very useful in that type of research. And it actually leads us to another point that a helmet with this smart foam, this piezoelectric foam in there that can sense these impacts, it's not necessarily going to reduce the risk of concussion. Concussions can still happen. The idea is that it's going to provide a lot more information that coaches and trainers would get that wireless signal transmitted directly to a tablet that they have, and they can track in real time what the magnitude of the impacts that their players are experiencing, and also the number of impacts, the number of serious impacts that their players are experiencing. So it's not like there's going to be a red light that says a concussion just happened, but it's more it's going to be information that the coaches and trainers can use to make decisions about when they should pull players from the game and when they've experienced too many impacts. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting point. I've heard kind of two stories on concussions that a very hard hit can cause a concussion, but also a, a accumulation of a number of smaller hits. So maybe being able to tell how many hits an athlete has had is a really important tool in helping to protect uh, their brains. They, they only have one. <laughs> so you really got to take care of it and uh, not put it in those risky situations when Absolutely. you're talking about head injuries. Karine, is this technology being used on football teams uh, at this moment? Not quite yet. It's just in the last year that Jake has developed this piezoelectric foam and had the idea to put it in helmets. And And he's right now working on prototype helmets. Uh, specifically, he wants to enter it in a competition that's held by GE and the NFL called the Head Health Challenge. And this competition is trying to identify new technologies that could advance the prevention, the measurement, and the detection of brain injuries. So he's currently working on a prototype football helmet that could be entered into this competition, but obviously this foam could really be put into any types of sport-related helmet that an athlete would wear. Beyond athletics, is this technology perhaps usable in other areas? It is. If you think about a self-reporting foam that measures impacts, there really are a lot of possible other applications. If you think about, you know, the foam in our shoes, for example, you know, if you put a smart sensing nano foam in your shoes, it could give you information or immediate feedback on the types of forces that your foot is experiencing. It could give us a lot of information on walking patterns or running patterns, things like that. But I mean, honestly, the the applications could be much more wide ranging. Law enforcement or even car companies would be interested in foams that report impacts or record the magnitude of different impacts. Kareen, this piezoelectric nano foam sounds like it could be a very powerful tool for athletes in assessing some of the forces that they're exposing their heads and brains to and really helping in the fight to prevent concussions and brain injuries, and even beyond that, into the world of, as you said, automakers and perhaps uh, law enforcement too. Thank you, Kareen, for sharing this very powerful technology with us today. My pleasure, Sean. Thanks. That's it for this week's show, but be sure to come back next time for more of the latest in science and technology. This podcast is a production of Current Science and Technology at the Museum of Science in Boston, part of the Boston community for over 175 years. For more information, visit our website at www.mos.org slash CST or email us at podcast at moss.org. Thanks for listening.